Hey everybody, Chris Bryant here. Glad to be back behind the microphone after a short absence. And we're going to start today with the CCNP Switch 5-Minute Video Boot Camp. Be opportunistic, be deterministic. If you see CNA Bulldogs are taking a peek here, keep taking a peek because I think you really need to see this material. Let's go ahead and start our 5-minute timer here. We're going to talk about a little bit of theory literally for about 30 seconds and then we'll be on the live equipment after that. Now, in your CCNA studies, I want to give you a quick review on this because we learned how root switches are elected early, early, early in our studies. First, we know the switch with the lowest priority is going to be the root. And if there's a tie in the priority, say if we left all of our switches at the default, then obviously it's going to be a tie because that default is 32768. And the switch with the lowest MAC address then will be the root. So it's a situation where we may have a problem and we may not because this isn't as cut and dry. This process is going to leave us with one switch as the root of all of our VLANs. And we may not even care about that. If you're working in a smaller network, you know, two switches and you got three VLANs, you might not even care which switch is going to take that role. But there may be situations on certification exams and in real world networking where you want to spread that role around a bit. Now in this lab, we're going to quickly review to determine which switch is the root for, for all of our current VLANs. And then we're going to change the root. We'll change the root for one or two of them here, uh, depending on how much time we have left. Here we're on switch one, and I've got a very simple setup here. Two switches, two trunks, that's it. And there are four different ways you can tell that we are not currently on the root switch. First off, under root ID, we don't see that magic phrase, this switch is the root. Secondly, the MAC address under root ID and bridge ID, they're different. So that's a tip off we're not on the root. Another tip off is that we see a root port. We do not have root ports on a root switch. And then finally, you'll see that one of the ports here is in blocking mode for VLAN 10. That's the command I ran here, show spanning VLAN 10. One of the ports is in blocking mode. If that's the case, then you're not on the root. For a quick comparison here, We'll run show spanning VLAN 10 on the other switch, which better be the root because it's the only other one I got in the network. And it is. Four different ways you can tell. First off, the magic phrase, this bridge is the root. You also see the MAC address under root ID and bridge ID are the same. You see designated ports, not root ports. You will only see the designated ports on the root itself for that VLAN. And then finally, both ports here, all ports are in forwarding mode. So we know four different ways we're on the root. But let's say we want to start spreading the workload here because right now, let's just do a show VLAN brief. Right now we've got VLANs 1, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And right now switch 2 is the root for all of those. But let's say I want to start spreading that workload a bit and I'm going to make switch 1 the root for VLAN 10 but leave it as it is for all the others change that number a little bit so I did trip there but there we go so let's take a look we know we're not the root for VLAN 10 right now the command I want to use for this is spanning VLAN spanning of course short for spanning tree then I'll put the number 10 in there then I'm gonna put root and then primary I have two options there but I want this to be the primary for VLAN 10 I'm not too worried about secondary root switches in a network that only has two switches to begin with. So what happened? We didn't see anything go up or down or anything like this, but the change takes effect that quickly. You can see now that the MAC address is the same under the root ID and the bridge ID. It's telling us this bridge is the root for VLAN 10. And you'll notice we've got two designated ports here now instead of one in forwarding and one in blocking. And this one's in forward. We caught that port in listening stage. It should now, let's run that command again. It should now certainly be in forwarding. There we go. So the command is that quick and that simple. But VLAN 20, nothing has changed there. And if we checked it for all the other VLANs, it would all be good. The switch 2 is still the route for all of our other VLANs. change it for 20 there you go nothing to it this bridge is the root everything looks good and that port will be in listening mode in just a moment 
So pretty cool stuff there and a great command to know uh, for your exams as well. I had that on a review. I just wanted to put this review up here for you. In short, use the spanning VLAN X, whatever the number is, root primary command to set a particular switch as the root for a particular VLAN. Hey, at four seconds to spare. Now, what about that secondary option I mentioned for a moment? As soon as I move that timer, you'll see. Uh, we're going to see that in action in the very next video. So thanks for watching this one. And I wanted to share one piece of news with you here very quickly. Uh, Udemy has rewarded with me with my own page out on their site because our sales have been so great. Your reaction to our courses have been fantastic. I will put the URL to this on the YouTube page, and you'll also see it in a couple of other places. Uh, we're going to change this up a little bit so you're not just looking at bulldog heads all the time. But I wanted to tell you a couple things. I've got a couple of free courses here. The free CCNA course on OSPF has 20,000 students in it right now. There's a free route course here. I'm going to put a free CCMP switch course here in July. And for all of the paid courses, always use the coupon code BULLDOG44. It's going to give you the best code possible, uh, the best price possible, including $99 on my CCNP all-in-one video boot camp. To be blunt, too, when you use the BULLDOG44 code, we get paid a little more, uh, which a couple of people here in the office just smile. That means bigger bonuses for us. <laughs> and it also helps to support our fund drive at the Central Virginia Food Bank, so it's good all the way around. So please do check me out on Udemy. We're going to be right back on YouTube on a regular basis starting today, July 17, 2014. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Chris Bryant, and I'll see you on YouTube and Udemy.